uh, feel free if you want to share your LinkedIn um, profile uh, profile links um, with other people as they're coming in, feel free to put them into the chat. It's great also to network with people as well whilst we're here. So as Judy's letting everybody in, we can uh, we can say hello and uh, great to see you here on our event today. Um, we're going to be talking about LinkedIn pages. They used to be called company pages, but now they're just called LinkedIn pages and how it might support your member growth, your engagement with your audience. Um, you know, you can power them up. They really powered up some of the features and Judy's going to be going through those um, shortly about how LinkedIn have really beefed up the company pages features. And we hope to leave you today with some ideas to take back to your offices, take back to your membership organisations to see how you can incorporate LinkedIn pages into your company strategy. So on the next slide, we're just going to introduce ourselves. So I'm Bernadette Gowdy and I'm um, a membership organisation expertise working with charities, societies, associations, federations, anywhere where there's a membership. And I've been doing that for more than 15 years now. And I'm joined today with a LinkedIn guru um, who is Judy Parsons. She's an independent LinkedIn trainer, LinkedIn marketing member, mentor, and she's a real LinkedIn expert. And Judy and I work together um, to really bring out the best in, in LinkedIn pages for membership organizations. So the next slide, really the first question is, well, why, why do we have a LinkedIn business page? Well, let's have a think about it. That first statement alone, there's over 31 million profiles on LinkedIn. And we went back to have a look at some of the previous um, stats. And about five years ago, there was 25 million. So in just a few years, there has been quite a big growth in terms of profiles on LinkedIn UK. It's, it's a shop window. It's a shop front for your brand. And that's really what this is about. It's about your brand. Whether you're a membership organization, whether you're a company, it's, it's your shop window. It's what people will be seeing on the world. And there's plenty of scope in now LinkedIn to share content through some of the features that we're gonna show you today. And many people are Googling. They're Googling around looking for whatever search terms that you, you know, they want to type in. And those will also, if you've got them linked from your website into your uh, LinkedIn page, that SEO will also bring them through in terms of when the Google search returns. So it's really also important that your, your LinkedIn page is maximized for those uh, search terms because it will bring a return. So the next, set, the next slide shows us a little bit more about developing your membership growth and your membership engagement. And for a number of associations now, LinkedIn pages is one of their key, one of the key elements of their strategic sort of communications um, strategy now, because there are so many new features to take advantage of. You know, the potential of the audience there is huge. You know, years ago, you used to be able to phone up, say you were looking, say you're in the architect area and you were looking for other architects, you used to be able to phone up companies and say, oh, if we, the architects who work there, can I have their names, their numbers, their contact details? You can't do that nowadays. Um, GDPR, you can't do that. Um, you could, no point buying membership lists or lists of, of types of architects. You try uploading them to MailChimp or other email providers. Makes life very difficult. So gathering new contacts, reaching out is actually, it's much more difficult nowadays, except on LinkedIn. The engagement and the potential there to reach out is there. We know also that email opening rates, they vary. Um, a couple of associations that I work for, they've been very, very busy over the last 12 months and their, their email opening rates have, um, have decreased now to about 18%. They used to be higher than that. Well, what are the other 80% people doing? Are they getting their messages? Are they understanding and hearing what the membership association or the membership body um, is, is reaching out and communicating about? Well. LinkedIn's another route. It's another powerful tool for that membership association to get their message out. And look at it, it's free. Take a step back and think how many things are free and it is free. Um, you can pay for other things, but you know, there's lots of basic plans with MailChimp, with SurveyMonkey, with other tools, a basic plan, but everything we're gonna show you today is free. And it's a very powerful tool that is free. So now I'm going to hand you over to Judy 
and she's going to take us through some of the key things. We've got some examples um, about how uh, membership companies and organisations can, can use these tools. And obviously, um, I'll chip in as well and I'll take over the waiting room for you as well, Judy. That's fabulous. Thank you so much, Bernadette. People are still coming in thick and yep. fast. So uh, uh, it is a little bit hectic uh, at the moment. So thank you so much. Now, um, I'm really loving uh, LinkedIn pages. LinkedIn has been doing a lot of work on really ramping up the features and functionality uh, that are within them. So I'm going to cover some of those today. And um, one of the biggest challenges, obviously, that companies have or membership organizations have is actually growing their follower growth. And one of the relatively new features, it's been around a while now, is the fact that we can invite up to a hundred of our connections to follow our company page. Now, each admin can do that and you can invite a hundred a month. So that's sort of first and foremost, the quickest and easiest way to sort of start growing your company page. However, the other way to do it is actually start increasing the visibility of your company page by engaging and reacting with posts that your audience, the people that you want to get in front of, um, are posting. And one of the ways to do that is using associated hashtags. LinkedIn events, which is what um, Bernadette have used to promote this event today. Um, is a great feature and I'm loving it. I love the fact, you know, before it was only on the individual personal profiles, I've now moved it over so that companies can actually host uh, LinkedIn events offline, um, offline or online events. If you're doing an event, LinkedIn events is really great to help you promote them. Product pages, uh, these are really new. These actually only came out in December uh, last year, 2020. And actually, um, the only, there's only uh, one company page that I'm an admin for that's actually got them. So they are really new. So I think they're quite exciting as well. Lead gen forms, another really exciting uh, feature, which is why I love LinkedIn events so much, is that you can actually generate interest from within LinkedIn. So we don't need a landing page. You don't need Eventbrite. You can use uh, lead gen forms to capture details of people who have interested. And everybody who has signed up today will have seen that. You'll have seen that lead gen, lead gen form in action. And then analytics, the company page analytics are a treasure trove for of marketing data for your company page. Um, it's a webinar in itself, to be honest. Um, and there's, there's, it's not, obviously they've been around a long time, but they're always tweaking and developing analytics. So let's start by looking at those hashtags that you can associate to your company page. You can only associate up to three hashtags. But those hashtags that you associate means that you can then go and engage on posts that contain that hashtag as your company. Traditionally on LinkedIn, you can only engage with posts as a person because it's a person to person platform. But this is one of the ways that you can get out there and raise your visibility as a company by associating hashtags. So you want to be careful about the hashtags that you choose. A, you want to have hashtags that have got a really reasonable good number of followers. And B, are the hashtags bringing up the right posts? Are they posts of your people that you want to get in front of? So for example, there's a couple of hashtags here, UK F M F G and UK Manufacturing. So um, you can see the first one has just over 6,000 followers. This one has over 11,000. So realistically, you want to use the one that's got the most followers. So it takes a little bit of research. You've got to work on finding who are the right people, uh, the right hashtags to use. So you've got LinkedIn hashtags, which actually is a Chrome extension. And if you install that on your Chrome browser, Whenever you move your cursor over a hashtag like I've done here with LinkedIn, hashtag LinkedIn, it will tell you how many followers are after that particular hashtag. So actually, it does make that research a little bit easier for you. So just to give you a sort of a demo of how that works, uh, we've got the community hashtags. So these are the associated hashtags with your company page. You can see hashtag UK manufacturing is selected. Up here, it gives us a feed in within your company page of all the posts that have got UK, um, hashtag UK manufacturing number, as you can see here. And then you can engage as your company. So in this example, I'm using BP Surface Technologies. You can see the logo there. I can now engage on this post as them. So you're raising your visibility out onto the network. LinkedIn events, well, as I say, one of my favorite, favorite things um, for company pages. 
um, it's really great that they've managed to sort of bring that across uh, to, to companies rather than individuals. You can use it to promote uh, online and offline events. There's no need for email addresses, as um, Bernadette was already alluding to before. Each admin can invite their connections to the event and attendees can also invite their connections to the event as well. And you can go in and find and LinkedIn promotes events to people uh, on LinkedIn. So a lot of that work is done for you that really raising the visibility and promoting the event is done for you. If you are doing a private event, you can still use LinkedIn events. You can have private events and you can have public events. So if you're doing a private event and you just want to select certain people, you can still use LinkedIn events to do that. So this here is a screenshot of our LinkedIn page that we did to uh, promote this event that Bernadette and I are using. Um, it's, you know, we have an event feed so you can put uh, start posts and conversations in here and it only goes out to the people who have said they are interested in attending. So you can start uh, talking about the event and starting to build excitement about it. You can notify attendees so you can really recommend posts to them so they should raise more visibility of that post in your uh, in their feed to get them to come and engage on those posts that you're putting into the event feed. Polls, we can use polls in events as well. Great feature that's great feature on the main LinkedIn on your own personal feed, never mind on events, but polls are really great for starting the conversation. And of course, we can invite connections from the uh, LinkedIn event page. So when you invite someone, what happens is, is they then get an invitation in their My Network um, tab to saying that, you know, I've invited them to, to come to this event. So they can either ignore and accept. If they accept, this is an example of the lead gen form that they get. And this is what you'll have seen when you registered for this event. And LinkedIn automatically populates the content. So there will have been an email address in here. There's a first name and a last name in there, which is automatically being filled in from somebody's profile. And then the other option here is that people can tick this box and then basically that's the GDPR and there um, there you can then put them onto your mailing list so that you can then send them other information that may be of interest to them. So it's a brilliant way to build your mailing list using directly with LinkedIn and it removes the need of taking people off LinkedIn onto Eventbrite. Just removes that step altogether. Um, so it makes it a little bit easier and, and what, that's why I like doing events from company pages. So product pages, um, so this is Outsider is the company that's got it. You can see here, there's a new tab on their navigation feed of the company page called products. And in here you can list lots of products. And the reason why I think this is really good to do, or one of the reasons it's really good is that this about section that you've got on the company page, you've only got 2000 characters to talk about your company. So it's not a huge amount, but actually if you can then use these pages to start talking about your products, you can actually say a little bit more uh, about each individual product. So it's a bit more like becoming like a website in itself, isn't it really? Because we can talk more, we can add pages to our, to our company, company page. So LinkedIn pages, you want to use this to showcase member benefits, any offerings, any services that you may have. Um, the other great thing is that you can use them to build social proof so people can go in and they can rate and they can review your products. And what LinkedIn will give you is a score out of five. So this is very much like a Google review or a Trustpilot review. You can actually start getting these and building reviews from within LinkedIn. Fantastic. Um, you can add media, so you can upload images, you can upload video, you can embed your uh, YouTube or your Vimeo videos to sort of actually, you know, say more about your product features. And also you can highlight who your product is for. Now, that's important because in theory and, 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 and in reality, all the marketing people out there will know, your product will not be for everyone. And my big thing is that you have an audience. Who is your ideal client? So in here, you can actually specify up to 10 job functions. So if you want to get in front of um, I know, architects, for example, you might want, you know, a partner, architectural director and, and things like that. So you can put those kind of job functions in there as to who your product actually is for. And of course, what we all want is to generate leads or opportunities. So we can add a call to action button. Now there are a number of buttons. So what this is going to do is going to say, you know, request a demo or find out more here. So there's a number of buttons that we can add that gets to encourage people to go from our LinkedIn product page through to the correct website page. 
So it will drive traffic to your website. So you can add a call to action button and get people if you want to request a demo or to find out more, whatever it is that you want people to do. What is that action you want people to take? And or even, wanna... Judy, to join yeah. now. Or join now. Absolutely. Mm. Join now. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, so exactly. So you can decide what uh, where you take people to and what that landing page is going to be within your website. Or, da -da -da, drum roll. You can use the lead gen forms again. So in this example here, this is a product they call a tracking software, the contact us button, click on that, it opens up this window. And again, it's all filled out and completed from the person's LinkedIn profile. So we've got email address, you've got last name, you've got job title, first name, company name. This is a bit more information if you remember than what we got in the event. One well, event one, we just got first name, last name and email. Here we've got job title and company name. But, you know, we can actually start capturing interest directly from our LinkedIn page by using these lead gen forms. And again, tick the box, GDPR, yep, please contact me via email. Now, people don't have to tick that box, but, and if they don't, then, you know, that's a, you kind of need to put that into your sort of system into how to encourage them onto your mailing list. But the fact is that you can do it and people do do it. And some of you will, when you did sign up for this page, may have ticked the box and some of you may haven't, so. That's a really interesting, but you're grabbing it, you're getting that interest directly from LinkedIn. And to me, that's what's really exciting. <laughs> so analytics, so there is a selection of metrics that you can have for your company page that will capture the performance and how it's doing. As I mentioned before, actually, this is a webinar in itself um, because um, there are loads of things that you can sort of follow and have a look at. But the reason I've got this picture on here is because uh, this is what you get if you go to your company page on the left hand sidebar you'll see this sort of these four sort of figures in here this sort of analytics and what these analytics are telling us is they're saying how many visitors or how many people are coming to your profile so you can have unique visitors or you may have returning visitors as well so in the last 30 days this company page has had 60 unique visitors and you can go and have a look at the demographics for those visitors so you can see what job functions they were in um, you can maybe see what location and industry and things like that you don't um, necessarily see who the visitors are but you get that demographic information and then, of course, you can see how well your page is growing in terms of followers. So this one has had six new followers in the last 30 days. So you can monitor how quickly or, or how fast your um, followers are growing. And what's new for company page analytics, of course, is the fact that they now you can now see who is following your company page, which I think is really exciting. They used to have it, then they took it away and now they brought it back again, which is a kind of a one of the downsides of LinkedIn is, of course, it's their platform and they can do what they want. And, you know, features come and go, uh, unfortunately. But this was a really good feature and, uh, you know, make the most of it. You cannot download your followers. Uh, you can't uh, download them, but you can see who they are. This one here um, is talking about the, the post and the, uh, sorry, the reach and the impact of your posts. You know, you can see um, how many post impressions, so how many people have had the opportunity to see your posts and company pages. I mean, this is our, uh, this in itself is, there's loads of information here. You can look at how well individual posts are doing. You can see which are performing best. If those are performing best, you can do more of and things like that. Um, so those are really, really important and impressive stats that you can use to test and monitor your, your content that you're posting onto your company page. Now, this one here at the bottom is what's really interesting, I think, because um, you can see it says three custom button links. And what we were just saying before, what's the website that you're using to take your um, members to or your, your clients to? Who, what is that website, what site URL that you're driving them to? This is telling me that three people have clicked through to the website in the last 30 days. Not that many, so it looks like I could do with doing a little bit of work on that to increase it. But that's important, so you can see how many people you don't know who they are but you can see how many you're driving from linkedin to your company page so you really ought to think about what that custom button is and where you're taking them to so you um, maximize the number of people who click free so some best practice tips first and foremost this is an easy tick in the box to do just make sure your page is fully completed um, according to LinkedIn, you get 30% more views if you've fully completed your, link, uh, your LinkedIn page. 
optimize with keywords. You know, for those of you who know me and have been to my profile trainings, you know that I say that you need to do the same with your profile. Your profile, your personal profile, your company page, they are both websites for your business and they get you found on Google. So if you know what your best performing keywords are on your website, put them on your LinkedIn company page as well. Again, make sure you're driving traffic with that call to action. So what I said here, these three custom button clicks, you know, make sure that you're driving traffic to your website using that call to action. Uh, do you want them to register or as Bernadette quite rightly said, send them to the join us page. Sometimes sending people to the home page may not necessarily be the right page to send them because people can get lost. You maybe want to think about sending them to a landing page or as, as Bernadette said, join us page. So people can take some more action when they actually do get to your website. Very important to have multiple admins. How many times I've worked with companies where they only had one admin and that admin left the company and nobody can get access to the company page. And then it's a case of having to go through LinkedIn support. You can get back, you can get it back. It's not a problem, but it's just a, you know, a bit of a, another loop to jump through. So you need to have at least two super user admins. You can have different level admins as content admin, creator admins who have different levels of um, permissions and things like that, but minimum of two super admin users who have complete control of the company page. And then you need to be monitoring. You don't want to just put your company page up there because we want it to be a living, breathing thing. We want it to be using to drive traffic, to open the conversation, to create opportunities, to get leads. So we need to be on there. We need to be active, responding to comments and posts, monitoring our hashtags, our associated hashtags. Where can we go and engage with the company and things like that? engage as a company, I should say. And a great way to do that and then raise your visibility on LinkedIn is to involve your employees or your members. If you are happy for your members to link their personal profiles to your company page, your members and your employees are your biggest brand advocates. And more often than not, on average, they've got a lot more connections than you've got for company page followers. So by getting your employees or your members to actually come in and engage on the company posts, it will absolutely exponentially impact, increase the reach of your posts. And that's why you can get so many impressions. So do you remember when I showed you on the stats here? That's why you can get so many impressions on your posts, because you are involving your employees or your members. So that was some real tips on uh, how to use company pages. I hope that was useful. We will be answering questions. I see there's quite a few, so I'm going to monitor those questions now. But I'm going to hand over to back over to Bernadette. Yeah, thanks, Judy. Uh, great overview of some of the some of the features. As you say, we can we could delve into some of them in much more detail. But at least it's given you a broad overview for your for your planning. And, and really some key takeaways now to think about when you go back to your offices, when you're thinking about this again, where's LinkedIn page is going to fit into your, your strategy, your communications planning. Well, I think hopefully, you know, the features are there right now. LinkedIn has made a lot more available on the company pages to, to really help you power up, to, to enhance what you're doing. And again, enforcing, there was a question about, is it, are events free? Yeah, this event today hasn't cost Judy and I anything except the time to plan. We haven't paid for anything. Uh, we've just used the feature uh, that LinkedIn has made available to us um, on this. The only thing that we're using obviously is Zoom to record it. So power up, think about how that can take you to the next level. Of course, it does need some planning and time. Uh, don't rush into it. Take the time to, to look at your, your website metrics um, and the analysis, the analytics on LinkedIn. Take the time to look at where you want to go and what you want to do. If possible, set some KPIs. Don't be too over ambitious. Um, set some modest ones in the beginning about where you'd like to go to in each stage. And then, uh, you know, see how what it takes to get there. And obviously, it's it can be a slow burn for associations. And um, one that I've been working with, you know, a couple of years ago, they didn't even have a LinkedIn company page. And it's taken us two years to get 2000 followers. But they are 2000 quality followers in the right area, in the right job descriptions. And they're really in the space of the association. So it can be a slow burn. But um, I think, as Judy would say, quality in terms of the right audience is far more important than just getting numbers. 
So on the next page, yes, we won't dwell on it too much, but obviously Judy and I, we would love to work with anybody uh, from uh, out there who's looking to uh, increase their company page presence. Uh, you know, we have the expertise, we can work out ways of managing and, and working with you. Uh, we have standard plans whereby you know what we're doing to help you over the hours during the month and then a more developmental plan to help you reach out engage more look for that audience and look for increased followers and potential obviously members because at the end of the day that effort has got to have a return for you it's got to have a return on investment um, and that's part of your kpis what are your kpis going to be to be able to measure that um, investment um, because um, we've all got to have some sort of return. So the final slide is, you know, feel free to contact us afterwards uh, to book in for a free 20 minute consultation. Judy and I are available to chat through your own company page. Uh, that's my email address, but feel free to um, send us a message on LinkedIn as well. We'll be happy to, to make an appointment. Sorry, I've got my hay fever. Um, starting now. So some questions. Yes, I think there are some questions coming in, Judy. So one of them was about, is it free? Yes, it is. Um, somebody asked about whether you can um, block people from the page, Judy. Can you do that? No, sadly, you can't. I've been asked that before and um, not at this stage, no. Hmm. Do you think it's likely that that is something they're going to introduce or? I think so, because one of the biggest problems that company pages have is that um, because anybody can link their personal profile to a company page, and there's a bit of a problem in that if you've got a company page with lots of employees on them, these dodgy fake profiles can hide in them. So, um, right. so I, I think they will be looking at that. But, you know, again, what LinkedIn's view is that everything is a user action. So it's up to individual users. So right. potentially. Uh, it'll always be um, interesting. LinkedIn always, as we know, changing and updating things and so potentially, but not at this moment. Yeah. OK, so a question also about hashtags. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I was working with an association where it took us about six to eight months to get the right hashtags because we tried different ones. Um, is there a, is, are there disadvantages in changing hashtags? No, you can change them. They're not fixed in stone. You know, right. it, absolutely. I change them all the time. Oh. What you so, do for your own work. Yeah, absolutely. If it's not the right hashtag, because and that's a great thing, just associate a hashtag with it. Look at it for a week, two weeks, whatever, however long. If it's not bringing up the right uh, conversations for you to participate in, use another one. Yeah, absolutely. Change them out. Okay, good. Um, somebody's asked about the mechanics of linking Zoom to, to the events. Now, we you have to kind of take it out, don't you, Judy? Because you set up the Zoom for this events page, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, obviously, you know, you need to have a platform to actually deliver. This is an online event, obviously. So you need a platform to deliver that online event. There is LinkedIn Live, um, which you can apply for. So then you can actually broadcast live within your LinkedIn event. Um, so actually people then you don't need Zoom and people can come straight in. Uh, LinkedIn Live, you have, as I say, you have to apply for. We, I don't have it yet. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, you do have to then have that process. You've got your list of people um, and you then have to have that process of, uh, yeah. of sending out emails. So in the today, what I was doing is um, sending message, you know, I, I did a post mm -hmm. on, on the event and I, I uh, promoted it. So people should have seen if you haven't got it, because I did email out all the Zoom links and it does happen, unfortunately. It's just one of those things, unfortunately, mm -hmm. that is just really difficult. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it's the way it goes, isn't it? You know. So another question, which I know I asked you actually when we were doing this, because I haven't got product pages on any of the pages that I work on with associations. But what's the difference between a product page and a showcase page? Oh, now, we have a yes. showcase page, but yes. I don't have access to product pages because none of my pages have it. Yes. Yeah. And I think this is what's going to happen with showcase pages. I think they if if I have a showcase page, it will then be now become a product page. So basically, showcase pages are sub pages within a company page. Um, and you can get you can build followers to that company page, that showcase page, should I say, um, you've got a whole it is a bit like a product page in that you can talk about it if you're going to use that showcase page as a product page. So for example, Bernadette, this page that we is a uh -huh. showcase page. Uh -huh. So the I'm uh, it's a Ariga LinkedIn is a showcase page of your main Ariga page. Uh -huh. 
So the downside of showcase pages is A, you cannot link personal profiles to it, and B, um, you have to, it's all about doing double the work because you're going to have to get followers for that come showcase right. page as well as your personal, uh, your main company page. So having product pages keeps everything together. Right. Everybody can link to the same company page. And um, it just it just means less work, I guess, mm -hmm. realistically. Yeah. And there's more functionality within product pages than there are within showcase pages now. Oh, OK. You just have to wait to see if you're going to get product pages. Yes. <laughs> That's the problem. It sounds That's attractive. The of LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, uh, we don't all have it. Um, no, so that exactly. is the problem. OK, so I'm just looking back through the questions. So we've had some about hashtags um, free of charge. Is there any more questions about blocking um, people? Mm, I just sorry, I just noticed that Abdul's got his hand up. So oh, sorry, Abdul. Yeah, we didn't see that. Thank you. Uh, I must say this was really an interesting one. I was looking forward to getting to know something about the page, how exactly it's maintained. And I got a, a quite good glimpse about it. Most importantly, what I wanted to ask, and I'm very curious, is uh, when we use a hashtag, again, coming to that point, when we use a hashtag in the post, not on the page, of course, I do understand there's a difference, but when we use the hashtag in the post, do you really think it works and it shows into the hashtags panel in, in LinkedIn? I, I'm really curious to know that. Um, so I'm, I think I understand your question, Abdul. So apologies mm -hmm. if I answer, if I don't quite get it. But if you use hashtags, so the hashtags that you decide to associate to your company page you definitely want to be using on your company page posts as well hashtags work really well because they group conversations together and people can follow hashtags um hashtags are a relatively recent introduction again it's one of those things that linkedin used to have then they left got rid of them and then brought them back so for posts absolutely you want to be using hashtags between three and nine hashtags per post and they, um, in fact, there was somebody who did some research, uh, really interesting research, and they got um, like the Open University and stuff like that to test it for them. And it said that if you didn't use hashtags, it had a detrimental, detrimental impact on your post reach. So definitely use hashtags. Thank you for that. My pleasure. Um, we've also got a question, uh, Judy, on about the lead generation form we set up. Is that only available like when you're doing um, an event? Uh, yes, events and so. product pages. Yes. Okay. And right. also only link company page events. Very important. Oh, so it's only available on company page events. Right. Yeah. Okay. So if you did it from, um, uh, right. Okay. So it's not available on anything. Else. I didn't know that actually. I didn't know that. I thought it was available on other things. So that's good. Okay. Uh, any more questions? Do LinkedIn events have to be approved by LinkedIn? No. No, I don't remember ours being approved. We just went ahead, did it, and published it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, okay. So that's uh, so uh, yeah. if you do the lead gen forms, obviously you have to put your policy, um, yes, your public, what is it? I mean, your the website privacy, the privacy policy. policy. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah. So when we did the lead generation, yeah, we had to link it to our website. You haven't got a website that has to be linked to a privacy policy because that's all the GDPR stuff, etc. So uh, um, and a question about, again, these followers of our company page. Can we remove people? No, no, no I don't that was remember. The, yeah, yeah, yeah the blocking absolutely. And the OK. All right. Any more questions, if anybody wants to type them in the chat or ask us before we finish, because we're coming up to the uh, just past actually the half hour. Um, if not, we will be recording this and putting it in on our channel. So if you've missed any or you want to uh, go back and refresh, then uh, it will be available afterwards to to um, to watch again. Um, if there's any more questions, we're happy to answer them or you can ask afterwards. If not, then um, we'll we'll thank you very much for attending today.